This screencast is a review, a uh, mid-module review of Module 5. I'm going to run you through a number of problems that are very similar to what you'll see in the assessment using different numbers with similar procedures. I have a PDF file that you can download and try for yourself, and then come back and uh, see how you did. Uh, there should be adequate explanation to uh, let you know how to go through all these problems, and it should be a great deal of help and ensure your success when you take your Module 5 mid-module review. Okay, these are pretty simple representations. Uh, tell the volume of each figure made of one inch cube. Specify the correct uh, units of measure. The main thing we need to realize is that one, two, all these faces here represent one, one unit cube. And the unit is one inch. So we have a length, we have a width, and a height of one inch. So one times one times one is one inch cubed. So let's look at the bottom here. We have three by three. Now, we can't see all the ones on the bottom, but we know something is holding up these guys here. We can see that one is holding up that. We need to presume there's two behind that, or underneath that, rather. <coughs> so we have three by three equals nine. We can count three on the top, plus three is twelve, and our unit is inches cubed. The next one, not too complicated. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, but we can't see one. There's one that's holding up this guy right here and is to the side of this one and this one here. So I can see eight. There's one that is underneath these guys and above these guys. So we know that there are nine inches cubed. Okay, this is interesting. One of the more complex problems here. We're going to you know, take this step by step and uh, look at what Bob's talking about and look at what Roberta's talking about. Bob found the volume of the prism pictured to the right by multiplying 5 times 4 times 5, then adding 20 plus 20 plus 20 is 60. He says his volume is 60 cubic centimeters. Roberta says he did it wrong. He should have multiplied the bottom first, 3 times 4, and then multiplied the height by the height. Explain to Roberta why Bob's method is works and is equivalent to her method. Well, what we're talking about is uh, what we did in Lesson 3. I believe it was Lesson 3, where we divided rectangular prisms going different ways, and I'll review those ways with you. Uh, in some ways, uh, we did bread slices. Remember, we kind of did it that way. Sometimes we did cake layers going that way, and then we had front and back going that way. Let's look at what Bob did. Bob has 4 by 5, and he says there's three layers of 4 by 5. Each are 20. So let's look at our dimensions. There's the three. So we have that's the one that we have to pick here. And if we draw these in, we see that Bob is going front to back. Not beautifully drawn, but hey, good enough. Now, how many are in each layer? Well, I can do that a couple ways. I can see that this surface here, okay, the area is 5 times 4. So each one of these layers has 5 cubes by 4 cubes. 5 times 4 is 20. I can label that 20. And I'll use an arrow here, 20. And 20, I know if you're in my class, I, that's what I want you to do. Um, now that we have that labeled, the diagrams labeled, we can uh, talk about uh, what we did, uh, and that's largely up here. We have uh, uh, 20 in layers, so we have three layers, 20 per layer, equals 60, and again, 60 units cubes, or uh, cubic inches. All right, so we see that. We also could have, by the way, looked at this as we know that the volume is 60 because we have volume equals length times width times height equals uh, 4 times 3 times 5 equals 12 
times 5 equals 60. So we could have done 60 divided by 3 because we see he had 3 layers. What's Roberta doing? Well, we're going to draw another rectangular prism. And think about how she's looking at it. She says he should have multiplied the bottom first, 3 by 4. Well, we have our bottom 3 by 4. I'm going to label this 4 inches by 3 inches, and we have 5 inches. So she multiplied this layer, and if we do it that way, we can see that she is multiplying uh, using the cake layers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 lines showing five cake layers because we have five inches. If we have four times three, each of these layers has twelve. And if we multiply, we have uh, we have five layers. Twelve per layer equals sixty inches cubed. So we end up with the same answer. We we can make some comments talking about how uh, Bob is uh, cutting this into layers going from front to back, and Roberta is using cake layers and referring to there's uh, different ways to divide our rectangular prisms up, and in each case we get the same answer. Okay, this one's an interesting one. If the figure below is made of cubes with three centimeter side lengths, what is the volume? Explain your thinking. Okay, I, I'm going to work the math. I'm going to explain things verbally. It's up to you to write things down clearly. When they mention that, they're talking about each one of these cubes here. This guy right here well, could do a better job tracing that. I'll go back, do a race, and see if we can get that a little bit closer. So we get this guy right here. Can't see all the sides, but this guy right here is the base, the, the width and the height, or the length, width, and height are all three. So we have our length, we have our width, we have our height, and each one of those is three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters. So we need to look at each one of these sides here. Um, so each one of these portions is 3. So I have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, and that's 4 times 3, and that would be 12 centimeters. And this side, same thing. And by the way, on your test, it's not going to be a cube, so make sure you count um, each one of these numbers of cubes on each side. So again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 times 3. And that equals 12 centimeters. And the same here. 4 times 3 equals 12 centimeters. So now we have uh, something to work with. So I have volume equals, uh, we have our length, 12 centimeters, times 12 centimeters, which is our width, times our height, and there's again 12 centimeters. Again, don't count on this being the case with your um, assessment. 12 times 12 is 144. It's a basic fact. Centimeter squared times 12. We'll now set up the problem going vertically. And I multiply 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 1 is 2. Put in our 0 because we're now multiplying from the tens place. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 1 is 1. Find the sum. Of the partial products to our regroup, and I get 1,728, and the unit now is centimeters cubed. Again, you're going to have to talk about what you did using some words, but uh, my verbal explanation uh, gives you what you need, uh, plus the math that we performed. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We have a volume of a rectangular prism is 300 inches cubed. If the area of the base is 25 inches squared, find its height, draw and label a model to show your thinking. Okay, two tasks here. One, we have to find the height, and two, we have to draw a picture. We know that uh, we can calculate volume 
by multiplying one of the faces, and, and uh, commonly we'll just call that base, times the height, which is one of the dimensions outside of that face, beyond that face. We know the volume is 300 inches cubed. We know that the base is 25 inches squared. We don't know the height. Here we have a problem with a uh, missing factor. When we have a problem with a missing factor, we use the inverse operation. The inverse of multiplying is dividing. So we'll now divide 300 divided by 25. It goes in once. I subtract. I get a 5. Bring down the 0. It goes in twice. 50 minus 50 is 0. So we know that we have 12 inches. And that's just plain inches because it's, it's uh, one dimension. It's the height. Now we need to draw a picture. Connect them. We find the base. We know that's 25 inches squared. We want to find our height. And that is 12 inches. So we have our uh, model that's labeled. And we have our mathematics. Okay, this one's a little more complicated. We have a, a combination of things to account for. But they give us all the information we need. We don't really have to figure anything out, which makes it easier than some of the homework we've had. So we have the following structures composed of two right rectangular prisms that each measure 11 inches by 8 inches by 3 inches. That would be those two because there's two of the same size. And one rectangular prism that measures 8 by 6 by 24 inches. That would be this guy. What is the total volume of the structure? Explain your thinking. I think a lot of this can be explained mathematically in my mind, but you should use a few words whenever you see the word explain. So explain what you did. So we'll find the volume of A's. We'll call these A's, and we'll call this B. And when we find A, we're going to have to multiply it by 2 because there's 2 of them. There's other ways we could do that, but uh, I think that's the clearest and simplest. So we have volume equals 11 times 8 by times 3. And I'm going to I'm going to start by multiplying these guys here because it's really easy to multiply by 11s. So that's 11 times 24. And 11 times 24 is 264. If you're in my class, you understand how that's easily done. Okay, and that would be inches squared. However, I have two of these guys. So I'm going to take 264. I'm going to multiply it by 2 because I have two of those rectangular prisms. And we multiply, and we get 8. And 2 times 6 is 12. Regroup the 1. And... 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So those two A's are 528. Now let's find B. We have 8 by 6 by 24. And we can simply multiply that out. Not a big deal. That's a volume. That should put a V there. So I now multiply... 8 times 6, I have 48 times 24. I'm going to set that up as a multiplication problem going uh, vertically. And 4 times 8 is 32. Regroup the 3. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3 is 19. And put in my 0 because I'm multiplying from the tens place. 2 times 8 is 16. Regroup my 1. And 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. We'll find the sum of our partial products. We get a 2 in the 1's place, a 5, regroup, and I have 1,152. Now, these, both of these are inches cubed, and that should say cubed as well. So we're going to find the sum of these two. So 1,158. 528, and that, excuse me, I made a little mistake there. We should have this as 1,152, uh, 1, so we'll put, make the correction there. Find the sum, and I have 
10, regroup the 1, 8, 1 plus 5 is 6, and 1 plus nothing is 1. And make sure that when we're doing these, we label our units so they're inches cubed. There's the answer. And again, you should explain your thinking. I have walked you through the process with my words uh, verbally, and you can pick up on some of that for what you need to write. Okay, this problem is a two-part problem. We're going to have to find the answer to the first part, and we'll use that to help us with the second part. Let's look at the first part. Find the volume of the rectangular fish tank. Explain your thinking. Well, that's pretty basic. And uh, we can just take our uh, standard formula, volume equals length times width times height. And we can plug in our numbers. So volume equals our length. Well, the length is defined up here, okay, which is the same as here and here. We'll, we'll get back to that for the next part of this problem. So I have 30, my width is 20, and my height is 15. And these are all centimeters. So we'll multiply volume equals 3 times 2 is 6. We have a couple of zeros. This is uh, 3 tenths times two tens, and that gives us six hundreds times fifteen. Okay, let's write this going vertically. And six hundred times fifteen. This is five times zero is zero. Five times zero is zero. And five times six is thirty. Insert our zero because we're multiplying from the tens place. One times zero is zero. One times zero is zero. And 1 times 6 is 6. Find the sum of our partial products. And we end up with 9,000 centimeters cubed. So I guess if you want to explain it, you can say I've multiplied length times width times height. I, as uh, in my class, I'm happy with that explanation right there, along with the math. So now, let's see what what complications they add here. If the fish tank is completely filled with water, then 1,200 cubic centimeters are pulled out, poured out. How high will the water be? Give your answer in centimeters and show your work. Well, I'm going to make a little tape diagram here. We originally had 9,000 centimeters cubed. And by the way, just as a reminder, a centimeter cubed is the same as a milliliter, so that could be 900 milliliters. We're going to pour out 1,200. What's left? Looking at the tape diagram, it tells us we need to subtract because we have basically a missing add end. So let's see what we got. 9,000 minus 1,200. Subtract my 0, 0, my 0. Uh, this becomes an 8. Regroup, and I have 8, and 8 minus 1 is 7. So I have 7,800. So that's my volume. Right now. Okay, I want to know how high that's going to be. So in order to know how high that's going to be, the easiest thing to do here is use this formula. Volume equals base times height. We know that the volume is going to be 7,800. We don't know the base yet, but we can figure that out. We have enough information. A lot of people get confused because they don't see this portion of the base labeled. We referred to that in the previous problem. But we know that this is the length, and this is the length, and this is the length. So this one up here is 30. This one is 30 centimeters. This one's 30 centimeters. And that one back here, by the way, is 30 centimeters. Now we have all the dimensions for our base. So we're going to multiply and find the area of the base. So I have 30 centimeters times 20 centimeters. And that's easy enough to multiply. We have 600. So now I have 600 as my base dimension times my height. And again, we have a missing factor. That means we do the inverse operation. So I'll take 7,800 divided by 600. 
Now, I, I look at this this way. I have 7,800 divided by 600. And I know that if I do the same thing to both the uh, numerator and the denominator, I think in a fraction is very much... Uh, can be looked at as a, multiple, as a division problem. If I divided this 7,800 7, by 100, I'd have 78. And 600 divided by 100 is 6. So it's even easier to do this problem this way. 6 goes into 7 once. I subtract and I get a 1. Bring down my 8. And uh, 6 goes into 18 three times. 18. I'll make a little space here, and we get a zero. So, our answer is 13 centimeters. The height is 13 centimeters. This is an interesting problem. Let's read it. Bob wants to know if the chicken broth in this beaker will fit into the rectangular storage container. Explain how you could figure it out without pouring the contents in. If it will fit, how much more broth could the storage container hold? If not, how much broth would be left over? Remember, and we mentioned this earlier in the presentation here, uh, one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. All right, well, the first thing we need to do is look at this beaker. And we need to know how much is in it. And that's one of the more complicated parts of this. But let's look from here to here. We could almost make that a number line. And I have a 0 and I have a 2. right? And I have how many hops? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what's the value? of each one of these hops, well, that would be one-fifth of two milliliters, or two liters, rather, which is the same, by the way, as 2,000 milliliters. We should know that by now. So what do we have here? Well, each one of these is one-fifth of two milliliters, or two liters which is the same as one-fifth of 2,000 milliliters. And that equals 1 times 2,000 over 5, which equals 2,000 divided by 5. We could also take 2,000 divided by 5, just go directly, right? I have 2,000 milliliters broken into one, two, three, four, five different parts. Not four, five. So when we do the division, we end up with 400 milliliters. So what do we have here? And also I could talk about that as tenths uh, of, a, of a liter. So what do I have here? I have, well, I have 2,000 right here. And I have, I go up one more. So that means I have 2,000 plus 400 equals 2,400. Now, let's take a look at our rectangular prism. We want to find the volume. And of course, this is in milliliters, right? This is in centimeters, but when we multiply centimeters by centimeters by centimeters, we get centimeters cubed, and that's the same as a milliliter. So, volume equals 25 times 10 times 8 equals 250 times 8, and that equals 2,000 centimeters cubed. Okay, well, can, can it hold everything? The answer is no, because the container only holds 2,000 centimeters cubed, and the amount of broth in that uh, beaker is 2,400. So how much is left over? Well, I have my 2,400. I subtract what I can pour into that rectangular prism, and I get 400 milliliters. Now again, you need to do some explaining. You need to explain a few things in, in my mind. You need to explain how you know how much is in 
the original beaker, you need to talk about what each one of these little lines means. Then you need to calculate how much is in the beaker and calculate the volume of the rectangular prism and then do some thinking.